this nicer weather means for some of us more uh, more in the way of allergy season. I've got a slight tickle in my throat today, so bear with me. I may have to occasionally stop and clear that out. You're, you're talking in a particular moment, and all of a sudden the word starts coming up out of your throat, and then it just stops as if there's a barrier there, and then you got to <clears throat> clear that out and start all over again. There was a story that I had hoped to get to yesterday, but as usual, we, we get into some situations on air where when, when we have just about 77 minutes of actual talk time over two hours a day, the clock sometimes runs out. But it was a story that is getting a lot of attention right here in Twin Falls. And I, I wanted to talk about it today because it, it ta- tells us a lot about what we think the role of schools or roles of schools are in modern America. Here's a country where we're worried about test scores and competitiveness and how we can better train young people for the modern economy and some of the changes because we realize you've got people out there saying in 15 years, 90% of all jobs in this country may be handled by robots. So what do we need to do? We need to train more people to repair robots, obviously. That would be one area uh, that we could keep people employed. But we have to find ways to teach young people some very basic things, whether it be you know, in, in, in the trades or whether it be in specialties. And yet we get bogged down so often because of social issues and somebody's feelings are hurt. And there's a belief that the schools should be handling the feelings. I, I knew this 20 years ago when I was hiring young people at television stations. And they would come in for their interviews and they had been at school and all the way since kindergarten, they had had all of these respect lessons. That is R-E-S-P-E-C-T. I'm okay, you're okay. And bullying's bad. And look, nobody likes to be bullied, but it happens. You're going to find in life, my parents used to tell us, fight your own battle. Sometimes we'd come home from school and say, you know, somebody, somebody was mean to us, might even be a teacher. Fight your own battles. And when I had one of my very first jobs in media, I had a boss. I thought that my first name was, well, I'll, I'll abbreviate it, GD, because gosh darn collie was what he'd yell when he'd come out of his office. And he didn't say gosh darn, I'll just put it that way. But he was a lot like my parents. And I learned a lot from him about my chosen field. Otherwise, I let that stuff roll off my back. And to this day, I like to call him up on the telephone. I haven't seen the guy in over 20 years, but I'll call him up. We'll have a wonderful time talking on the phone. But it made me tough, and it made me, it, it made me realize that when you're out there in the real world, you've got to learn to deal with these things. It's not going to be perfect. So many people today want to push that easy button. That's why they want government to take care of them from cradle to grave. And they think everybody else out there ought to just say, I'm okay, you're okay, and give you a big group hug wherever you happen to be. This came out of the Times News. Julie Wooten, the writer. Spirit Day sparks a bash, uh, backlash at Twin Falls High. Goodness gracious, back in the day when we would have a big football game coming up, we would have all sorts of spirit days. We'd have to wear certain clothes to school to show your team spirit, or you'd have to have certain things that you would cheer on, and it was all part of that experience. None of it has anything to do with actually learning, though. But, it, it, well, they'll tell you you it's a good social exercise. I, I guess so. The writer says, the student council organized the event Friday. It's a school tradition. In past years, it was a boys versus girls day with friendly competitions. But you know, we're in 2017, and boys versus girls just doesn't cut it because you've got some people who think they're uh, giraffes and some who think that they're cheetahs and some who aren't sure. So you've got to acknowledge all of those things, and those people didn't like the idea of boys versus girls. In response to student concerns, student leaders changed it to blue versus pink. Uh oh. <laughs> well, does that mean that you're implying if they had had yellow and red, I'm sure that the Asian students and the indigenous students would have said, well, wait a minute. Are you trying to insult us and in claiming that uh, Asians are yellow skinned and that the indigenous people are red skinned? How dare you? And so the writer goes on to say, A group of students, including some who are transgender, say they feel targeted after wearing purple shirts to school instead of pink or blue. Ooh, 
<laughs> I got a purple shirt. It says Vikings on it. Twin Falls resident Jen Blair, an advocate for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender youth, that's a mouthful, said her daughter, who is straight, decided to participate. I do give Jen Blair credit. She's not one of those people out there screaming in the streets, smashing windows and burning things down. Uh, you know, she, she's rather sober about all of this. But she said to the newspaper, it was pretty hostile in the hallways all day, apparently. Apparently meaning, well, I heard it was, I don't know, but apparently means that's uh, what somebody told me, and I'll just go with whatever somebody told me. Some teachers led class discussions about gender during the day. Well, you've got exams coming up, right? So let's talk about gender. Don't worry about the calculus and the algebra and the biology and the physics. Let's talk about gender instead. After all, the Chinese are beating us over the head, graduating 60,000 engineers every year. We need to have a gender discussion. The writer says, but other incidents felt traumatizing to some students. In one classroom, a student wrote a message on a chalkboard. Transgenderism is a mental disease, but it was erased without discussion, Blair said. Well, maybe they actually had to teach somebody to read and write that day. Number two... Why is it that the schools have to have these discussions? When I was a kid, you went home. Well, of course, we had two parents at home. You went home and you said something to mom and dad about something that happened at school, and they had the discussion with you. But at school, you were expected to come in, have your homework done, have your assigned reading done, and take the quiz or take the test. And at the end of the year, you were expected to pass. In fact, your parents wanted you to do that. And it was expected that when you got out of school that you either learned to trade already had some knowledge of how to do that, and really in any job you take, whether it be after a college degree or even without a college degree, you're going to need some of these basic skills. If you're a cashier, you have to know a little bit how to count change. Some places, obviously, that machine now, speaking of robotics, takes care of that. But if you're working on construction, you know, have to, you've got to have an idea of measurements, and if you're working on the farm, you've got to have an idea of well, measurements and any number of different things, some mechanical training. If you're going on to college and you plan to be a rocket scientist, you better have some skills with calculus and physics and all of those areas as well. And yet the colleges all tell us that they have to spend the first two years on remedial education. See, spot, run. Puff is on the television. There's Sally smiling. They have to do all of this all over again for the first two years. Meanwhile, your kids are borrowing $250,000 to get this college education. Then they're coming out, and they're no brighter than when they left high school. And yet we want to have arguments. Oh, they wore pink and blue, and it hurt my feelings. Are we supposed to have a discussion on whether it's a mental disorder? Because even if you imply that, you're shouted down any longer as being mean-spirited, cruel, and likely one of those godly Christians, and we all know how much of a problem they happen to be. They just sit around every Sunday and talk about how they can go hate on more people. 815, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You know right now, after this newspaper story, that administrators and teachers are all cowering. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We'll we'll forget all about learning and we'll have a we'll have a group hug and then everyone will feel so much better and the newspaper and the activists and the other fellow travelers will like us a lot more that way. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about all of those Chinese industries taking over the planet. Or the growth in Singapore or Malaysia. Or the fact that 90% of all the jobs in 15 years will be handled by robots. Or Mexicans. I want you to feel self-actualized. Let me give you a big hug. And you realize spirit days are going to have to be shelved because of all of this. Now that someone has complained, they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings next year, so that'll be the end of it. We'll turn it into some drudgery where they'll dim the lights and you'll walk around the halls. It'll look like some Soviet-style apartment complex. And you'll be expected to work in that, in that atmosphere. Telephone number for reaching our show today, 736-0300. 736-0300. And they call me a shock jock. That's because 
speaking the truth any longer and not sugarcoating it is shocking to people because you're supposed to sit there and say, well, I've got to figure out how to nuance this. So the fellow over there who thinks he's a kitty cat or a giraffe or a cheetah, we don't want to hurt his feelings. He might even be a big purple gorilla. And so we've got to figure out how we can best say this or we should say nothing at all. 7360300, my email address, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. Check this out. Cheryl Chumley writing at the Washington Times. The headline, California's coming third gender intersex. There's male, there's female, but in California, she writes, there may soon be intersex. And state legislators supporting the notion say this isn't an LGBT, uh, I got to remember all of these letters. They just keep adding to it. LGBTQ driven thing, but rather a recognition of a real, albeit rare, biological occurrence. (laughs) My body looks quite different from other women, said Sarah Kelly Keenan, who uses the pronoun she, but who was nevertheless issued an intersex classification on her New York City birth certificate in recognition of her being born without sex organs that clearly identified her gender. That according to CBS 13. Now I do feel feel for that woman. That has got to be a difficult way to live and to grow up. But (laughs) what do you call, uh, uh, why don't they just put it on the birth certificate? Bill, that's mean and that's going to hurt her feelings. Well, I don't know. That's just a euphemism too, isn't it? And it's of these people whom California lawmakers are thinking with their intersex box option bill, Keenan is actually petitioning for the new gender choice, saying the state ought to allow for placement of a third non-binary option on IDs, including birth certificates and driver's licenses. Now, you can get a driver's license there. and you, you don't even have to prove that you're here in this country legally. The question, though, that is raised by the writer is why? As California goes, so too will a host of other nations. What will come is a collapse of the normal, a turn away from God, uh, what God makes in favor of what humans devise. Uh, Chumley is a Christian writer. Keenan told reporters in front of California's Capitol building her main reason for pressing the cause was to make those with gender abnormalities feel less invisible in society. Well, she's certainly not invisible. She's out there in front of the banker of microphones and all of the cameras. So I would guess that that's not an issue for her. She's found a way to address it. She become a household name in California. And then we have this out of Washington State, not too far away from here. And remember, a lot of the refugees from Oregon, Washington, California are coming here as tax refugees, but it won't be long before they're demanding that we adopt their ways. Uh, the writer Peter Heck at The Resurgence says, Democrats in Washington have introduced legislation that would ban Christian counseling for those who want help overcoming same-sex attraction. Now, no one's forcing it upon them. This is for those people who think that maybe this is what I need. And yet the government's going to step in and say, no, you can't do it. Why? Because it might work. And there's a large constituency, uh, well, it's a minority, but still large in the Democrat Party, that doesn't want this. Because if people walk away cured, and they have in some places, then that sort of pulls the rug out from under your argument now, doesn't it? We're about 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. We're at 48. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I have a, another story that shows you just how wacky this political correctness has gotten in this country, not only here, and we've been talking about what's happening in our own backyard as well as California and Washington State. And you can bet a lot of the people who are involved in that wackiness here are transplants from those places. It's 823. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 48. Also wanted to remind you if you're listening to the program, thank you. But if you're struggling with hearing the show, I'd like you to get in touch with Dr. Christine Pickup, a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert. Now, there are many choices available throughout the valley for your hearing health care. And you may be saying, well, why then would I drive out to Rupert and choose Mount Harrison Audiology? Independence. Mount Harrison Audiology is the only independent, locally owned hearing health care practice in southern Idaho. That means more choices for treatment than just one brand and lower costs. Trust your hearing to a certified audiologist. Call Mount Harrison Audiology for your appointment today. The number 312-0957. That's 312-0957. I watched a portion of Tucker Carlson's program last night on Fox. Uh, but I can't, you know, I have an early 
early wake-up call. I don't generally stay up and watch the whole show, so I missed, uh, obviously, some segments. I'll talk a little bit later ab- about some of what I happened to see. But this one I missed. I read about it today in the Daily Caller, and the Daily Caller has an accompanying video. A Daily Caller was actually founded by Tucker Carlson. An anthropologist who worked as a consultant for the United Nations and previously worked for the federal government whitewashed the practice of female genital mutilation as, quote, gender egalitarian surgeries, unquote, in an appearance on Tucker Carlson tonight. Now, we've had a couple of stories. Mainstream media is not giving it a lot of attention, but we've had a couple of stories just in the last couple of weeks where these Muslim women, moms and dads, are mutilating the genitals of their daughters because, well, I guess the Quran must say they're not supposed to have any pleasure when they're married. That's only for men in that religious faith. But we wouldn't want to hurt the feelings of these savages, so now people are saying, well, it's gender egalitarian surgeries. How much more do we have to bend over backwards to welcome these people and their their ancient backwards and savage practices because we're worried about hurting their feelings so this is okay now it's been happening all over europe and europe they've been un- unable to control all of this and because it's happening more and more frequently there as they're overrun by these migrants who are coming into their countries it's now an accepted practice and, and you've got liberals in this country who are now trying to argue it should be an accepted practice here. Now, keep in mind, some liberals out there will make fun of baptism, saying, ah, oh, you think immersion by water <laughs> makes you a Christian. Uh, uh, what a silly old-fashioned ceremony. And yet they'll back this up. Telephone number for reaching our program, 736-0300, 736-0300. You're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. This is Top Story with Bill Colley, and you're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Thank you for taking my call. You know, I, I don't understand if you're shocked, why you're shocked that a liberal would support this. I mean, they don't care if you tear a baby out of the womb and kill it. Why the hell would they uh, care if they're going to mutilate some little girl that ain't done nothing to nobody? You got to remember, Bill, I mean, I need to call here a few months ago. The liberal, a liberal human being is the meanest, cruelest, most ignorant, stupid, worthless animal on the planet. Can I put it any more plain than that? <laughs> they, are ab- they are absolutely the, the sludge in the bottom of a septic tank in my world. These people will do anything for attention. They will hurt anybody, a baby, uh, a girl that's uh, that, to, to, to mutilate them. They'll, I mean, they will do anything. you got to remember, they're the ones that didn't even want the slaves uh, freed. It was the Republicans that did that. I mean, any time you look at it, whenever the word liberal comes into mind, it's nothing but bad. They're absolutely, totally pathetic human beings. And to support something like this, to mutilate a little girl and say, well, geez, you know, that's, that's just the way they do things. No, it ain't. We ain't supposed to agree with stuff that ain't human. We're not supposed to go along with stuff just because some tribe in some other country says, oh, this is, oh, this is ducky with us. Well, what We're happens American. If, if we have, huh? what happens if we start having people come here and they'd like to shrink heads, chop people's heads yeah, off and exactly. shrink them and wear them around their neck? Do we allow that? You're exactly right. See, that's what I'm saying. They, you, they, see, they, they, you go to Mexico and sneak across, you're going to prison. You come to the United States and sneak across, we're going to take you to the uh, chow line and feed you, give you a house and everything else. But, oh, no, we can't, we can't take care of ourselves. We can't do it. Because why? Because you got people like Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, uh, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton. There's your real somebody to talk about women. I mean, come on. And then these people will sit here and do nothing, absolutely nothing, except suck the money out of the the uh, taxpayers. And then they expect us to be happy about it. I don't understand. I cannot figure it out. And until the United States turns around, until this country says to ourselves, you know, guys, we got to take care of ourselves, and we got to protect little kids, and we got to protect unborn babies, you know something? We're destined for nothing but hell. Well That's said. That's just how it is. Well said. I got to run. 
Uh, you know, every once in a while I get a call from somebody and I'll joke how oh, they need their own show. He does. I mean, he's that good. Uh, and I enjoy his telephone calls during the course of the show. Coming up on 8.30 this morning, and we're at 51 already. Bill Colley with you on top. We're going to hit 80 today, according to most forecasts. Anybody out there complaining? I, I didn't think so. Hey, since we mentioned that, you may be thinking about, you should have already tried it out, but find out if that air conditioning unit is working, and if you're having problems with it, you need to call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. They'll come out, and they'll get the job done right, and they'll get it done right the first time. They'll actually, well, I love the slogan. They sell warm winters and cool summers. Ramsey Heating and Electric, located at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number is 678-0459. That's 678-0459. We've got more on this subject coming up in about, oh, 10 minutes, but we have a guest uh, shortly.